My name is Alex Martin, and I serve as editor of Seed World Magazine. And today, I'm happy to host another episode of our Giant Views video series for our Seed World International. Even though we can't meet in person to celebrate the release of our international edition of Seed World, we are absolutely thrilled to have a very special guest with us today uh, virtually. Um, so I'd like to introduce to everyone Diego Russo, um, Executive Director of the Seed Association of the Americas. Diego, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And um, we're going to start pretty easy today because I'd like for you to start by telling us a little bit about yourself and then also a little bit about the, the Seed Association of the Americas. So thank you very much. Uh, Alex, and thank you also to the Seed World Group because they, they all think on SAA, they are very good partners, and uh, this is a good opportunity to, to keep in touch. So, so regarding uh, myself, um, I'm an economy, you know, I was grown up in a national research institute. Uh, my father was an economy also, and he was a researcher all his life. Uh, he was involved in plant breeding and then the interaction between uh, pastures and, and animal husbandry. So uh, being grown up in a research station where agriculture uh, was all my atmosphere, uh, then I decided to study agronomy. So I have been uh, involved in agriculture for, for many years, or I will say all, all my life. My first uh, five years after being a Grammy was to work with farmers, uh, close to growers, and uh, I was really in field. But uh, since 2002, I started in the seed business. So I joined the Uruguayan Plant Breeders Association, uh, and that gave me also the opportunity to to learn and be part of the of the SIA family. The Seed Association of the Americas invited me to join as also the, the executive director, and uh, since then, uh, I have been on board. So currently, I wear two hats, the, the hat of the Uruguayan Plant Breeders Association and the Seed Association of the America. So the second part of your question, you asked me about uh, the association. Let's talk about SAA. Uh, SAA um, intends to gather all countries uh, within the America. Currently, we have countries from North America and South America, uh, from Canada, U.S., Mexico, and most of the of the Latin American countries. And um, well, our main goal is to represent uh, our members with a unified voice uh, in front of uh, all regulatory and officials and policymakers, and definitely to make our members' life easier regarding this movement within the America. Yeah, no, definitely. I can understand why people would want their lives to be easier, especially in the Americas when it comes to seed movement. That is a tall order of, of things to work on. Uh, now, Diego, I, I know you have four specific working groups that work within SAA, and they're meeting rather soon this fall. Um, so I kind of wanted to ask, what are some what are some concerns you're hoping to address within those working groups? What are what are your members concerned with right now? Yes. So for those that are not familiar with our working group, uh, we have the plant breeding innovation and biotechnology working group, the fish phytosanitary matters working group, seed treatment, and uh, intellectual property. So those are our four pillars within SIA. And also, since um, Virginia, from the, she's our communication communication manager here at SIA, since she got on board also, we are trying to develop probably a fifth group about communication, trying to gather all the communication um, activities that our members do uh, in order to see how we can better benefit from the experiences of the different countries. So regarding your question um, and trying to find an, a one thing that could uh, apply to all our groups, I will say that um, we, we are looking to harmonize it and simplifying regulations. 
uh, definitely harmonization will make uh, our membership companies easier, but also will facilitate technologies to reach the hands of those that need the technologies. Let's say farmers. So at the end of the day, we will reach consumers. So FAA works towards to 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 identify where are those concerns uh, regarding um, regulations in order to work towards a common approach and solution. Well, and do you mind if I ask what some of the regulations are that kind of are concerning you right now? Is there one in particular you're working on right now, working on addressing and uh, fixing? Yes, no. Try to finish your one. I will say they are the top one, two, and three. Um, when you go to this movement, definitely try to send any regulations are those that um, seed companies uh, struggle with. Um, so we definitely work a lot with the NPPOs, National Plant Protection Offices, either directly but mostly through our members in National Seed Association. But also we work very closely with the RPPOs, the Regional Plant Protection Organizations, uh, which in our region are COSAVE, from our Latin American region, mostly South, and from North, it will be NAFTA. So bringing all these uh, stakeholders together around the same table has shown to be a very good and strong tool to find a common solution. No, oh, that's absolutely wonderful to hear. I know phytosanitary has been a big concern with a lot of different associations, and I think it will continue to be a big concern, but hopefully we can find some solutions that tackle it soon. Um, I know another concern you've had while we've chatted on different topics has always been the implementation of UPOV 91 in your member countries. Um, so I wanted to ask how that's going and if you're seeing any progress in getting uh, UPOV 91 implemented. Um, well, here I will divide, uh, or it should be analyzed country by country because um, the situation is different. Um, as, as you might know, you have uh, countries like Canada uh, that, let's say, recently joined UPOV 91. It has been a few years ago, and, and definitely the U.S. a while ago. Now, but in Peru, Peru is also a country that's also a member of UPOV 91. But then, all the other countries that are members of SIA are, are under UPOV 78 Act. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this has been a huge challenge, at least since I'm on board on the seed industry, which started in 2002. So I say at least since 2002 is because it's where the story starts for me, but I know that the story starts before I got on board. So, um, and always referring, moving from UPOV 78 to UPOV 91X. And, and as I said, um, the situation is different depending on the countries uh, we refer to. So, in some, in some countries, there are huge lobbying powers from NGOs against moving towards UPOV 91, whether in other countries you have farmers' organization also with huge lobbying power. So it's not about NGOs, it's not about the official sector, it's about the farmers. In other countries, it's the official side, so the policy makers are not convinced. So the scenarios are extremely different. So the problem is the same. We cannot move towards UPOV 91, but in some countries, we have pressure from NGOs, while farmers and policymakers are in favor of it. In other countries, you have uh, NGOs not active, but you have farmers associations doing a lot of power against it. So it's a case by case analysis, but at the end of the day, we're struggling with. And you asked me about progress. So we always think we are making progress when working toward it because we never stop working doing our advocacy efforts. We work every day behind it, but it's extremely difficult to move fast. So it's really 
uh, step-by-step -step discussion. And let's see, I hope soon some country within Latin America will join you, Pop91. Let's see what happens. Well, and I sh maybe I should have asked this question first before I asked how the implementation is going, but why is the implementation of UPOB 91 so important for these countries to, to, to get in gear? Yes. Um, well, definitely uh, UPOB 91 provides benefits and guarantees for stakeholders. So it's not only about a breeder's perspective. I will say that it will bring benefit to breeders, of course, definitely, but to farmers, policies, the federal government, and also to the uh, civil society. So UPOB 91, I will say, uh, has a very good scope of protection. So <clears throat> when we talk about protection, I always talk about like a scale. So we should have a balanced scale where on one side you can have access to the technology, okay? Um, by access, I mean farmers getting the benefits. And in the other case of the scale, okay, you have a fair remuneration for that access. So that will be the breeder's uh, plate of the scale. So that relation should be fair for both parties where the official but the government and the PVP regulators should be the middle of the scale, protecting those interests in a fair way, in a fair system. And I think UPOM 91 is like the perfect framework to keep this scale balanced, mm -hmm. to have a fair a scenario for all the stakeholders. Um, you have examples of countries that have improved their seed law. So, although they are not currently UPOP 91 members, their seed laws are very close to be like UPOP 91 Act. And, um, and that have proven that gives more guarantees to breeders and down the road it provides benefits to everyone, mostly for farmers. Perfect. No, I think that. That does sound like a, a great world where everything can be balanced from breeders all the way down to, to farmers. Um, I'm going to have a switch gears a little bit, and um, I want to go back to talking about um, SAA. And particularly, I am sure as ex executive director of SAA, there are a lot of challenges that come with that position. So what's one challenge in particular that uh, keeps you up at night in your position? Well, oof. that's a challenging uh, question. Um, so let's say our vision is to represent the seed industry in the Americas with a unified voice. So, how to be the unified voice that represents our members' interests within the Americas? So, first, what I will say really keeps me up at night is, is SAA, is the association I'm leading, providing the uh, platform for our members to do a diagnosis of the current situation, to find the challenges, weaknesses, uh, um, the threats for the business, the threats for the seed movement um, being met, are we giving them the right platform? So if we're doing that, okay, through our working groups, are we really finding the solution that our members are looking for? So, and, and the other thing is how to keep our members engaged within SIA. So they can really feel part of the association because they see the benefits of our association. And what it has been unique for SAA as a seed association, and I say it has been because I know now other associations do it, is to keep very close to policymakers, to regulators, in order to find a solution to our members' problems. That is a very tall order. I can understand why it keeps you up a little bit at night. 
I know, Diego, we've talked about a lot of challenges your members are facing right now. Um, so I kind of want to broaden that a little bit. And I want to ask you, um, what is a challenge you think the seed industry is facing right now? That's a very challenging question to answer because it's difficult to say at one thing. Uh, probably this is something I have been asking myself. It's not something that we you currently see in the seed industry discussions uh, or in the association discussions. But uh, I'm convinced that the seed industry has a very, very good story to tell. What we do for the world. It's urgent. It's amazing. So my question is why we haven't been able to tell our story, our great story, to tell the world what we do, the benefits we, um, we give to the society. I see other industries that could face the same problems and they are not facing those. So I don't want to compare it now with other type of industry, but our story is great and we somewhere we are failing in how to communicate it. The city industry is part of the solution of the main problem the world is facing today. I, I completely understand because we should be a part of the solution because we are part of the solution. Definitely we are, yes. Definitely. Well, then let's end, Diego, with a, um, a fun question. After asking about so many concerns you have, I always like to ask forward-thinking questions. So in your perfect world, um, what are you looking forward to in the future of the Americas? So, in the perfect world, in the very short term, I hope a COVID-free scenario that allows, allows us, all our colleagues and friends, to meet face-to-face. -face. I will say that way. Networking is an extremely uh, an important part of our business. And although they're digital tools, the face-to-face, -face, the in-person meeting, are very necessary. So I hope the short term scenario is a COVID free one or where we can uh, move and see each other. Okay. Regarding the seed business, mm -hmm. regarding the seed business, uh, I hope we can see in a scenario where the, the breeders and the consumers and all the value chains within the person, the company that is thinking on the new variety, the new technologies that this variety should, should have, should include, while in the other part, the consumer getting the benefits of this variety and the value chain in the middle. So the seed company, seed production, seed distribution, retailers, of course, farmers producing, Okay, they can operate in a transparent process and uh, in a smooth process where seed can move easily, okay, and where the access to the technology is based on time, where regulations do not stop seed trade, seed business, seed movement, but regulations provide guarantees to consumers. So thank you very much, Alex, and thank you to all the Seed World team where we have very good friends. Uh, just a final invitation to all those uh, listening to uh, this interview that uh, operates within the Americas and they are part of the seed industry family. Feel free to contact your national seed association and ask them that you're willing to join SAA Working Group. SAA is an open association and uh, we need to have good uh, resources in terms of expertise, knowledge, in order to know where the problems, to look for the solutions, and then finding the solutions. So thank you very much again.
Well, Diego, I hope we can achieve at least one part of your perfect world soon, and that is being able to see each other in person again soon. But for the other part, I hope we also see uh, a world where seed is not impacted as much by regulations as well. Um, but thank you so much, Diego, for joining us for our first ever Seed World International and for sharing a little bit more about yourself and SAA. And for everyone watching, um, make sure to tune in later for another great giant views that we'll have. Um, we have a lot of great uh, people and associations that we're talking to and we want you to be able to see them all. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye-bye.